Okay, praise the Lord. I have a word I want to release to the congregation before we get into uh, the service today. As I was praying before the Lord this morning, this word came to me again, and I really felt it was for the congregation today. And God said, I am Jehovah Rohi, which means the Lord is our shepherd. And what God wants you to know today is that he is walking it out with you. As you're going through what you're going through today, this is for somebody today. As you're going through what you're going through today, the Lord says, I am Jehovah Rohi. I am the Lord, your shepherd. He is watching your steps and he is guiding your life. And somebody needs to reach out and grab a hold of that this morning. Amen. You are not alone. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The Hebrew writer said it this way in Hebrews 13, 8. Because the Lord has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will say, it is God in who I trust. And I will not fear. Would you just lift your hands and praise him right there. We thank you, Father, today, Lord, that you are our guide, our shepherd, our shield. We thank you, Lord God, that you are directing our steps this morning. That, Lord God, we don't have anything to fear because you have said, Lord, you will never leave us or forsake us. You are here now. And we thank you, Lord. We take the comfort of this word. And, God, we place it in our hearts by faith. And believing, God, you're going to do a great, miraculous thing. All for the glory of your holy name. Amen. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Working in this place, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. Come on church, sing Waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are.
working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop. Thank you, Jesus. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when to wake up in the middle of the night and toss and turn for the rest of the morning. Do you like that? I don't like it either. But you know what? Sometimes God drops a little word in my heart at those times. And uh, that's what he did to me this morning. And he was just saying, you know what? I am about my business in your life. And I don't need you to plan anything for me. That's what he's saying to me, right? How many of you guys have ever tried to plan things for God in your life? What? You're all lying to me. <laughs> you got to raise your hand. No, I'm teasing. But it's true. We try to figure things out. We try to plan things out. And the thing that he was talking to me about was when um, Abraham was going, he needed to go make that sacrifice, right? And God told him to take his son, right? His, that's his only son that he waited so long for, like a hundred years. He was old and he probably loved his son so much. And God said for him to go. And Abraham didn't mess around for a few days and try to make a, a different way, did he? He went in what I call blind faith. He went up there in blind faith, knowing that he served a God who would supply his needs who wouldn't ask him to do something that he wouldn't make a way for. And, and we all know it all worked out, right? And I think about Paul. When Paul was leaving his good friends, you remember the scripture that says that they clung to him and begged him not to go? But you know, God had told him to do something, right? And he knew he had to go. And he went in blind faith. He didn't know how that was all going to work out. Was it right after that that he was on uh, the island for three years or whatever it was? <laughs> you know, it's like he was just walking in faith. But I call it blind faith because all he did was take steps, right? The floor was under his feet. He just kept walking and God put the floor. Every step that he took, he made a way, right? So this morning... I want to challenge you because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to challenge one another. And, you know, iron sharpens iron, right? So I believe that you guys got some stuff in your life that you are going to have to have faith about instead of trying to figure it all out on your own. Because, listen, I don't believe that God gives me words for no reason. 
So I believe he dropped this in my heart this morning because we all needed to hear it. Because I was preparing my heart to be here with you. All right, church? And we are the church and we're called to do some crazy stuff, right? If God's calling you to do something, don't try to sort it out before you take the step of faith to do it because I promise you, God will meet you there. Can I get some amens? Some witnesses that have had to do it before in their life and God worked it out. So this morning as we worship, this is a step of faith also because can you see God in this room? He's not visible to us. But when we worship, he inhabits the praises of his people. So this morning in blind faith, I challenge you to worship with everything you've got. With everything you've got, even if it doesn't seem like much. Maybe you've been in the depths of despair. Okay, I can talk about this because I lived it. I was in the depths of despair once upon a time and I did not want to live another day. And I would beg God, please get me out of this. Please get me out of this. But I would go to church and my family, my church family would challenge me. What are you gonna do, Paula? Are you gonna give up? That's the kind of things my sisters would say to me. And I'd be like, no, I'm not gonna give up. And if something rose up inside of me, it's called the Spirit of God. So today, you have a chance to let the Lord rise up inside you. He will. He promises that he will make a way out of the thing that you don't want in your life. He made a way out of my depths of despair. And I look around me every time and I think, wow. I get to be here with my family and worship with you this morning because I listened to the word of God. So this morning I pray, Lord, would you give all of us eyes to see and ears to hear what your spirit is doing. Father, I pray that we would be obedient children to you, that we would listen to you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. There is a sound I love to hear It's the sound of the Savior's robe As he walks into the room Where people pray Where we hear praise is here there is a sound I love to hear It's the sound of the Savior's robe As he walks into the room Where people pray Where we hear worship here
Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest, cause without you, I fall apart, you're the one that guides my heart Lord I need you oh I need you every hour I need you my one Jesus my righteousness testimony if you guys want to sit so this is something that uh, um, I love about this church is that you can let the spirit lead and if at the moment God wants to change things up you can roll with that amen and so I'm rolling with this uh, because last night Sarah brought something up while we were sitting around a campfire which is our new home we're doing outdoor living <laughs> anyway that's a long story I'll tell later but Peru, Oklahoma. 
All right. So uh, anybody know where that is? I didn't. Oh, you do? Really? Only one person. Two? Okay. Well, usually. So anyways, that was our very first tour stop ever. Uh, we got dropped off there and started this life of adventure. Uh, but fast forward, I think it's a year or two later on our second or third tour. I can't remember. And the scripture for this tour was uh, 1 Corinthians, and I can't remember, it's 9, 26 or something like that. It's the one that says, "Become I become all things to all men that I may win some. You guys know that scripture? So I don't have to read it. You understand where I'm at. That's kind of the heart of this tour. And so here we are in this town with a whole bunch of kids, young people that love hard, screamo rock and roll. Like this is their kind of music. But all we really had on the tour at the time were a bunch of acoustic folk singers. Okay? Now, this is going to be a great challenge for you, I hope, because God's really speaking something very specific in this little, you know, story I'm about to tell. I knew that we had to do something. Unless God told me, just go out there and the kids will probably like your folk music. But that wasn't the case. God was like, you need to make something happen. All right, what can you do with what you got? So this one guy who was a solo singer with an acoustic guitar, I knew he used to be in a screamer band. And I said, hey, man, I know you used to scream. I don't know if you scream anymore. But I said, don't even worry about making up any words. Just scream, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to make up a fake band, all right, out of all the tour members. We were touring with about five bands at the time. And so... I'm kind of going by the seat of my pants and, uh, you know, sometimes, and I, I told somebody this the other day, in a battle, sometimes you have to be good at spontaneous decisions. Yeah. Things can change in a heartbeat and you've got to be ready. Amen. And so at this time, we're in Peru, Oklahoma, and I got a curveball. All my folk singers are not going to reach the kids of this town. And so I'm spontaneously letting the Holy Spirit lead me in a very strange way right? How do you reach these kids? How do you become all things to them? Hey man, I know you used to be in a screamer band. Do you mind just doing a little screaming and I'll play guitar and uh, you drummer from that band, you guitar player, we're going to make up a fake band, okay? We all went upstairs in this church and had a little computer and we put together three songs. You guys ever heard the word dubstep before? The young people are like, yeah, mm, mm, you know. So anyways, this dubstep was popular, and uh, so we just pulled up a, uh, you guys didn't like my little it bebop? It wasn't as good as it could have been. I called it a bebop. <laughs> <laughs> You're old. Uh, I am getting old. So we put all the most grungy sounds that we could find in the computer together. It's like just this crazy, like, sounding stuff. And our guitars had to be dropped, like, you know, like three keys to fit the sound. And it was just so, like, raw, you know. And I said, well, nobody's going to, we don't want them to know who we are because we look really corny if we all come back out from our little folk songs and we come back out and have this screaming rock band. So Paula suggested that we, we uh, make masks. And so we found online where you can form tinfoil to your face and then put tape over it and spray paint it white and cut out a holes for eyes and a mouth. We actually look super scary. <laughs> and so we called ourselves the zombie killers. Okay, we thought the kids would really dig that. Because Jesus brings life, so he kills the death. So yeah. That's what we were trying to do a play on words. Exactly, and we even had some little signs behind our guitars. Anyway, don't get ahead of myself. So in this process, we only had three songs. And, and I said, guys, let's go down into the gym here of the church, and let's play these songs, and we're going to make up some moves. Okay, we're going to choreograph the moves. Show them some. So I'll show them a little song. Okay, stuff like that. We just look really mean and angry. And we did it all together. Okay, now, we wore all black uh, hoods, so nobody could tell who we were, and you just looked this little scary thing. And so that night, or it was probably the next day, I think, we had the concert, they introduced us from, uh, like, I think it was from Switzerland or Russia something. Or you something. know, they're just being goofy out on the tour. We were on the tour, and... Uh, 
so they, they pretended we had bodyguards. It was basically they were pre pre pretending like we were famous. You know, we all kind of had fun with it. And all of a sudden, the kids, listen, listen to this, the kids went ballistic crazy. Like, they were listening to our folk songs, but they went absolutely nuts when we came out on stage, turned on the lights, cranked up the system. I only played like a chord, one chord on all the songs. I didn't even really do anything. And the guy is just screaming his head off. And he decides to do a front flip on the stage and land on his back and scream. Okay, friends, we became all things to these kids. And I think to this day, we're famous still in that yeah. town. They don't know who we are. We had to run off the stage and the kids were chasing us and we had to run into the woods and like the bodyguards the had to stop everybody. <laughs> now, the phenomenon of it was... Okay, when you decide to become all things to all men, oh my goodness, it makes sense why advertising, they, they go after demographics. They study people. Why would the world be better at studying people and advertising things than we would be right. for God? Amen. Anybody uh, follow me here? Sometimes they're not going to drive up your driveway and come into your church. Most Probably of most of the not. time not these days. <laughs> You know, back in the day, it was a good thing to come to church. Now it's like, people are like, ah, I don't know. You know, that's not for me. But we, the Lack family, we do outreach. So we're getting ready to go to Mexico in March, and I'm going to be playing, take it easy, take it, you know, and I'm going to be doing that because of the audience that we have. Mm -hmm. And guess what? We always play the church the next night. I mean, the next morning, and I say, Hey, everybody, hope you had a good time. I know we just played Freebird and melted your faces off, and I just stood on your table. But we're Christians, and we're going to be playing at church tomorrow. It would be awesome if you come. And we've seen the church explode fill and yes. fill up. Amen. Amen. Scott? One thing I love about things like the zombie killers was that it... it <laughs> <laughs> it drew all the kids into the stage and we would save the zombie killers to last because right after that we would give the gospel message and I'm telling you what um, lives were changed that day I know I know kids who gave their life to the Lord who are still serving him from that time and I also know kids that um, heard the gospel message and then just two months later they were killed and th but they were able to receive the Lord and so you know, when we, when, we, when we serve our communities, when we sharpen each other, it's a life or death situation. This is an emergency if you don't know that already. I mean, people need the salvation. They need the Lord. And so whatever means we can do to, um, to present the gospel to mm -hmm. each other and to our communities, we better be about that. We better be all about it and um, be busy doing what the Lord has called us to do. Amen. Can I add something to that? Yeah. So that same year, um, we actually did the zombie killers in multiple cities. I think for the remainder of the tour. So <laughs> probably like 40 cities maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the last cities we did was in Lake Elsinore. Does anybody know what Lake Elsinore is in California? Okay. All right. <clears throat> and so where we were in this church, there was kind of like a storefront. And right next to like directly right next to him was a um, Domino's Pizza. And a few months prior, or maybe a month prior, God told me, now listen, I'm not saying that this is something that you should do, but God spoke to me and said, I want you to buy a pack of cigarettes and stick them in your purse. And I was like, I've never bought a pack of cigarettes in my life. I don't smoke, I don't plan on smoking, but God's like, buy them and stick them in your purse. And I was like, okay. So for about a month, my purse smelled like cigarettes. And so, I'm like, why do I have these in my purse? Well, that night we got to Lake Elsinore. We were gonna do the zombie killers that night. Has anybody ever heard of Insane Clown Posse? Okay, don't listen to the music. It's not that great. Sorry, <laughs> if you like it. I'm not, I do not condone that band. Do not listen to that band. Um, but they have a huge following and it's almost like a cult type following. Um, have you ever heard of like, um, of course you have Grateful Dead, that same kind of following where people follow them from place to place. Well. This is a little bit darker, a lot darker. And they have these cult, this cult following, but it's more like gangs, right? They're some of the hardest kids I've ever met. 
hard kids. Not just hardcore, hard. Like they will beat you up, all of them. And, you know, anyway. So I see this group of kids. We had invited them to come to our concert, for, probably from one of the local... It was a pizza place or pizza, something. It was like they were sitting at Domino's, but we had met them at a park. And uh, <clears throat> by this time, you know, I had dreadlocks that went down all the way to like my, the top of my, my butt there. And it was like I, tr- I was trying to appeal to them because if I went up to them as clean, you know, Deborah, they would be like, what the heck are you doing? Why are you talking to us? You know, but I looked like them. So I went over to this group of kids and I'm like really scared because they're really rough. And I was like, hey, are you guys hungry? And they're like, yeah, we're starving. And I'm like, well, how about I buy some pizzas? And they're like, seriously? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll buy some pizzas. So I got some pizzas and pulled out whatever I was, had in my wallet, which is hardly anything. I bought some pizzas for them. I sat down with them on the sidewalk. I was chatting with them. <clears throat> Never once did I have to cuss or say something off color. I just sat there with them and it was just kind of like, yeah, we've been touring around. And, and one kid said, man, I wish I had a effing cigarette. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, oh. And then I was like, I have cigarettes in my purse. <laughs> And I was like, so I got them out. I had no idea what kind they were. I just was like, I have these. Would you like one? And he's like, yes. So I had just enough to give every single kid there a <laughs> cigarette. And they were like, dude, thank you. You're awesome. I'm just so glad that like, oh, man, you bought us pizza. And I'm like, hey. You Which know, if, it's- if you know those <clears throat> kids, they don't say, oh, dude, you're awesome no, to anybody. No, they're, you know, they're cussing and yelling at each other. And there's like. 14, 15 year old girls hanging in this group and you know that they're just being used and abused and that night those kids are like totally hooked them in the jaw with my little hook Mm -hmm. and they came and they stayed and they enjoyed the zombie killers and they had so much fun but they were rough I would probably be scared to pass them in the street but yet God used it and he brought them into the church building and was just, it was just great. And so I think to this day, those kids probably remember that concert. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but t- t- that year was really special, and it taught us a lot of how to become all things to all men so that you might win some. And so, right. yeah. So now, this is on you. The Lord spoke it. So where are you in your life? Are you literally just kind of following a routine and never you know, sitting with someone that God puts on your heart to talk with. Uh, I, I could go over a million scenarios. All I know is what we've experienced, and that is if God tells you to buy a pack of cigarettes, you do it, you know? I mean, gosh, I would never want anyone to smoke because I know what it can do to them, but if he knows it's the only ticket to someone's heart, I would do it in a heartbeat. Amen. But I have to ask you guys, like, what is God speaking to you even now about when you, you can picture th- people in your mind? But listen to this. We never once, and neither should you, ever, like she said, go off color to try to relate. You don't need to do that. Mm-hmm. You never have to become so much like the world that you can't tell the difference. You don't have to participate. No. <laughs> and so we've never done that. Even the, the secular songs we sing. If there's even sort of a word that doesn't jive, we're like, we're going to change that word because we feel like we should do this song. Or we won't do the song at all. Because integrity and uh, sanctification is being set apart. Amen? And we don't want to blend in. But anyways, I want to say a quick prayer for you guys. Well, I'm going to tell this story first because <laughs> I think you'll love it. Because we, we taped up these old electric guitars and because we were so hyper and crazy on the stage because we had to give the energy. We used to throw our guitars up in the air at the last song really high and then catch them and then just throw them on the ground and walk away, you know, just to be hardcore. Well, on this one particular night, probably the 17th time we played the Zombie Killers, I was accidentally standing on my guitar cord. And so when I went to throw it up, it only went about this far and came back and smacked me in the head. So they were like, yeah, he's hardcore. And then, and then the singer, he started doing that front flip on every show, but he got so wrapped up in the cord that he 
accidentally wrapped around his neck and he flipped over and choked himself. <laughs> no, he was okay, but it was just like, that was pretty hardcore. <laughs> so I want to say a prayer for you guys that God would reveal to you and help you to see, no matter what age you are, young or old, or in the middle, that God has a purpose and a plan for all of us. We're his hands and feet and his voice. Amen? And so we just wanted to share that this morning to encourage and challenge. Because sometimes it's like, oh, I know what I need to do, but I don't feel like doing that. So, Heavenly Father, Thank give you, us Jesus. your strength. Thank you. Give us your ideas. Inspire us, Lord. Remember uh, the spontaneous word that I said. Lord, we want to be able to uh, be walking through Walmart, which I know we all go there. And, and you say, look left. And that we wouldn't ignore that voice. That we wouldn't just think, oh, wow, what was that? But we would look left and stop immediately and say, yes, Lord. Can I get an amen? Amen. And you, and you say, do you see that person? And we say, yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. He says, go over there and just tell them, you know, hey, I hope you're having a good day. Or Jesus loves you. Or, hey, uh, can I pray for you? And I know those are some Christian things, but there's other things too. Like, hey, can I pay for that? You know, Whatever. God, you, you lead the way because you know. And I just thank you so much that this morning you are giving us an opportunity. We don't want to pass up an opportunity when you speak. Yes. And God, right now, I just pray that we're listening with spiritual ears and not just physical ears. So we praise you this morning for that. I pray you just give everyone here the strength to trust you and to do the things you ask us to do. In thank Jesus' you, name, amen. Yes, amen. 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 Okay. Let's all stand. Did you guys know that in Revelation, you can stand, um, in Revelation 22, it says that there is a river that flows from the throne of God. Amen. And you know that river is not going to dry up. We get to be in that river. We're in that river right now. I believe Holy Spirit is here. We're just waiting in that water, you know, feeling the refreshing of the Holy Spirit. But... Um, <laughs> But anyway, this is called in the river, and um, amen, God is making all things new in our lives. And so this morning, let's just, let's just continue to soak in that and let him speak to us, because I believe that he's a verbal God. I believe that he does speak to us, and all we have to do is just open our ears and our hearts. Amen? Amen. amen.
that flows from his throne. Let him wash you in the water, and he'll make you his things and how we're our own part of the body right our our ministry is is a certain part of God's body and I was reading in I think it's Romans pretty sure I was kind of just flipping through but the Lord told me to read this certain scripture and sometimes it doesn't always work out sometimes I'm just talking to myself and I'm like oh God said to read the scripture and it's like thy thou and I don't even understand it <laughs> But this time was actually really cool. And it was really from the Lord. <laughs> and it was about all of the, the parts of the body and how each of them have a certain job in a certain place and how um, ear doesn't say to eye, hey, I don't need you. Or you know, nose doesn't say to foot, you know, you've done your job, just go on. We need every part of the body to function, right? And it said that each person is a part of, the, of God's body. And you are really, really needed. And one thing that stuck out to me that was really cool is um, he said that the lower the parts of the body, the more needed. And you think, I... The eye is so beautiful, and it sees beautiful. It's, it's, it's something that you, you strive. I would, if I was a part of the body, I'd want to be the eye, because it's beautiful and so much character. So there's like celebrities, and you're like, oh, they're so beautiful. I want to be that person. But what if you're the stomach? What if you're a a really important part of the body that not a lot of people think, that's so beautiful, because, ew, <laughs> stomach's gross. <laughs> but it's so needed. You gotta have it. You gotta have the stomach. You gotta have the pinky toe for a reason. It's balance. It balances the whole body, right? And that's the lowest, most tiny part. <laughs> Nobody wants to be the pinky toe. <laughs> but what if you are? And you think, like mom said, I don't want to live anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. But what if you are a vital part in God's body? So if you want to become all things to all men to win some, do it because you are vital Amen. in doing the work of God. If I put my pinky toe in a cast and I don't let it move, it's just going to be in a cast. It's just going to be like pinky You're toe not doing funny. anything. Yeah. You're going to walk funny, right? Don't put yourself in a cast. Amen. Don't not allow yourself to move. Amen. Don't get stale. You know how the skin gets under a cast? Weird and slimy and <laughs> gross. gross. Stinky. You can't clean it. You don't want to be like that. You need to refresh yourself in the Lord. Make sure you're moving. Make sure that you're letting your certain part 
be used. And if that means to become something you don't want to become, or not like become something bad, I mean like if, if you don't want to be with the down and outers, too bad, sucker. You got to do your job, right? So I want to encourage you this morning that uh, you, you are a vital part and don't give up. And you really, really need to do what the Lord's leading you to do or else you're useless. <laughs> I'm sorry. But what's your, what's your purpose on this planet if you're not doing the will of the Lord? Amen. Amen. have passed away your love has stayed the same your constant grace remains the cornerstone things that we thought were dead are breathing in life again Cause your sun to shine on darkest nights. For all that you've done, we will pour out our love. This will be our anthem song. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you.
Jesus of our love, our adoration, we love you, God. Lift your voice, Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you, you are, you are the one and all. Our hearts adore. This is okay. I just have this on my heart so strong. Just keep playing. This morning, maybe you feel so dry. I know, we're Christians, you know, but sometimes we just get dry because we forget to ask the Lord to fill us with his spirit, you know. I know the Holy Spirit's always with us. I hope you know that. It's always with us. But he's our helper, right? And when you humble yourself and say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill me, Lord. If you want to speak in tongues, if you want to prophesy, if you just want peace in your life, if you want to share peace with other people, I think the Holy Spirit, you got to have that right there. I feel like the Lord's saying, if you want to get rid of offense, if you want to get rid of the offense that you've harbored in your heart Amen. against others, you can yes. never function fully until that root of bitterness is pulled out. Amen. You know, it's so important about bitterness because the Bible says to guard your heart because out of it flows the wellspring of life. And if you've just let everything pile up on there, then that's why you're probably struggling. I'm not talking about struggling about serving God or whatever. Maybe you're a little depressed. Maybe at some point you let your guard down. Maybe at some point you lived in some pretty filthy sin. And you never had hands laid on you. You never were delivered from those depressing things. Today's your day. Brothers, can you come up? Can you... Can we just have people come, Kim, and you guys, whoever your elders or all your spirit-filled people, you know, don't miss your opportunity because today is your day. Amen. God wants to touch your life, and he wants to take away all those pains that you're going through, but you have to surrender to him, okay? You have to surrender. You have to say with your mouth, Lord, I need you. I remember as a teenager saying, God, I need you. I am really messed up. I need you. And guess what? He was so faithful. He helped me. So today we're going to sing, So Will I. If you want to be counted in on this this morning, then you come up here as we sing. And no judgment. This is all about us getting equipped in this room before we go out there today. I mean, we all need this, not just one or two of us, every single one of us. So let the Lord have his way. Amen. start before the beginning of time with no point of reference you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light and as you speak So alive, I can see your heart in everything you made. Every burning star, a signal fire of grace. If creation sings your praises, so alive. I'm
will empty your void For once you have spoken All nature and science follows the sound of your voice And as you speak
of Jesus. Jesus. Nothing takes your place, Jesus. Let us never, ever take your place. Let us never, ever think that we can take your place. You are the King. And we adore you. And we lift you up. And we will praise your name forever and always. You are the famous one. Nothing will ever shine as bright as you for all eternity. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Stars made to worship so alive. to lift you high so will I if the wind goes where you send it so will I if the rocks cry out in silence so will I if the sound of all our praise is still fall shy then I'll sing again a hundred you pray thank you Jesus you need to be restored in your soul there's more here today there's more here today you need to be restored in your soul come on in the name of Jesus come hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus bless God bless Lord Bless Lord. Jesus. The Lord demonstrates his glory in many different ways. 
but he loves hearing the voice of his people the prophet said call upon me and I will answer and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of and you just begin to whisper the name of Jesus sometimes you just don't know how to worship the Lord but if you'll lift your hands and open your mouth and speak his name that's enough for him to reach down and pull you up and set your feet firmly by faith. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I've, had a, I've had some things happen in the last 12 years of my life that have lasted um, pain and hurt, hurts that run very deep. And I didn't realize it until a couple days ago that I had a root of bitterness in my heart. And I've been warring with this bitterness. Because I'm a person, right? And things happen to me, same way they happen to you. And the Lord's just sweetly saying, can I help you take it out? Can I help you? And I, and I war with it because I think, well, if I can't keep this anger and resentment towards these people and because they hurt me time and time and time again, how will I ever have vindication and we've heard in the word it says that justice is mine why can't those words be good enough for me because I want to prove a point or maybe that root of bitterness has grown and now touches the areas of my life not just one so just right alongside you guys this morning I'm asking the Lord to continue to pull on that root pull it out remove it from me so that I can be free right you will never thrive in a church body when you eat and you live on a fence. You won't. The Lord is asking you, whatever it is you have a fence in your life, to lay it at his feet and allow him to start the process of healing. It's really freeing, but sometimes it's really hard. So this morning, as the Holy Spirit just continues to heal because that's what he's doing he's bringing restoration to those little broken areas in your heart he loves you he crafted you literally crafted you you were God's dream think about that you were dreamt up by God. The same way I sit and I think of something I want to paint or make, and I think this is going to be amazing. God felt that way about each and every one of you. That's crazy to me. He has a humongous imagination. Anyway, I hope that you're encouraged this morning. I felt like I needed to say that. So. Praise the Lord. As I was reading my devotions today, I was in the book of Galatians. And I saw a scripture there that I've been familiar with, but haven't thought of it for a while. And the scripture says, Why would you try to end in the flesh what I have begun in the spirit, says the Lord. 
And God started us on this journey with a powerful manifestation, a move of Holy Spirit power in our lives as a church. And sometimes in the process of time, we just kind of move along and create our own ministry of what we're doing and how we're doing it. And what we have here today is a breaking in the atmosphere. God has moved us out of the normal into the supernatural. And I just hear the Lord asking the question, do you know it? Do you recognize that God has broke this atmosphere into something supernatural? The Lord wants to get you back to that place where you rededicate your life. Go back to that place where you know you've been before. Where the fullness of the glory flows. This is what the Lord is calling us to in this hour as his church. Not just Harvest Fellowship, but this is the call of God. The Spirit of the Lord can do something in one minute of time, one second, one touch, and accomplish more than we could do in a lifetime. And I just want you to search your hearts today. I want you to just search your hearts and examine your life and ask yourself this question. Am I where God wants me to be? Am I at that place of great closeness and intimacy with God like I've been in the past? And if not, then it's up to you to do something about it. It's a time of dedication. Amen. To rededicate to those purposes that God has placed in your life. Just like Chloe was talking about the body. That you are important to the Lord. God has a destiny, a plan, and a purpose in each and every one of our lives to function at the highest level that the place he's put us in. He doesn't want us to be limited, casted up, and held back. I just feel this is the Lord. This atmosphere is just so anointed. It's just the Lord calling us today. He's wooing us by the power of his spirit to say, why would you Lean on the flesh when you started to run so well in the spirit. Yes. And we need to rededicate ourselves to the purpose of God. To get back to that place that we know God has called us to. You might say, well, pastor, I, I'm not, I, I don't know what I'm called to do. I'll tell you one thing you're called to do. Get as close to God as you can. And I have a feeling today that each and every one of us, including myself this morning, can do that. We can get closer to God by dedicating, by saying, God, today, today, restore the joy of my salvation. Yes. Lord, stir the gifts of the Spirit in my soul. God, baptize me in the Holy Spirit and fire again. Lord, I come to you. Jesus is calling. And he says, those who come to him, he will in no way reject or cast out. So one more time. I don't want you to leave this place the same way you came in. You don't have to. And God doesn't want you to. He wants to do a stirring in your soul. He wants you to know today that today is the day of rededication. Today is the day that you come back to that place where you said, as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Amen. God, here I am. Use me. Multitudes in the valley of decision, lift up your eyes unto the fields for they are white. And the laborers are plenty. I mean, the, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. God, here I am. Use me. I just feel the Lord wants to have you stand all around the church. Come on, just stand up one more time. Some of you need the exercise. If you're here today, 
If you're here today and you have not made a decision to be saved, you're here because someone invited you to come here. I want you to know you are as important to the kingdom of God as anybody. Amen. He knows your name. He knows who you are. And he knows the plan he has for your life. So when we pray this prayer of dedication, you have to attach your faith to it. Do you know what I mean by that? You have to believe it. We're not just rehearsing a prayer. We're saying something. We're speaking something into the heavenlies. We're making a declaration by faith. The Hebrew writer said that the promises of God did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith. So the promises of God are yes, but we've got to attach our amen. So then all the promises of God become yes and yes. Amen. amen. And God wants to fire you up into this year 2022. It's not too late. Amen. We're just starting this year. And I know some of you are feeling that God's got something big he wants to do in this year for you. Would you lift your hands all around the church? You, Father, we thank you today, God, for this day of dedication. The Lord, we come to you again. And we humble ourselves. And we repent of our shortcomings. God, we're sorry for the thing we've made it. God, we want you. We want to be, Lord, led by your spirit. Filled with your spirit. And anointed by your spirit. Lord bring freshness down into this congregation of people. Help them to know Lord God your voice more clearly. Help them Lord God to see Lord that your hand is not short. That it cannot save. If you're today you don't know Jesus. All you have to do is pray this prayer. And mix it with your faith and belief and say Jesus. Come into my life. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. Forgive me for everything that I've done in the past. Save my soul. Wash my sins away. I want to live for you. Hallelujah. We just have... We just have we, I don't know... If you even know what's happening right here. But, but I just have. I'm arrested by the spirit of God right here. I'm just arrested by the spirit of God. I, I, I can't move past this moment. I know you want to go. But we're, we're going to let you go. In just a minute. But not now. Not right this minute. Someone today needs to be taught. In what it is to wait on the Lord. God wants to do more. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Come on, body. Worship him. Speak in your heavenly language to the Lord. Pray to him and pray to him in your heavenly language. Tongues are for a sign. Tongues does three things. Number one, according to 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, tongues, you speak to God. Number two, God blesses you and strengthens you, according to Jude verse 20. And number three, God begins to open the door and show you great mysteries. The mysteries of God are not hidden from you. They're hidden for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Break off. Break off. Break up the fellow ground, Lord.
Amen. God bless you guys until next time. Hallelujah.